OMG says we are back with Mortal Kombat 2, Mortal Kombat Harder. Guys, how are you feeling about this? <laughs> the bomb's been set. It's hardcore now. <laughs> Someone set us up the bomb. Yep. Man. 90s references, like Mortal Kombat is often awesome too. <laughs> Man, the Mortal Kombat numbering is weird. We got Mortal Kombat, then we got Mortal Kombat 10, and then we got, uh, what? what's the Roman numeral XL come out to in Roman numerals? And then we got mm -hmm. Mortal Kombat 2. It's like, you thought Resident That's Evil right. was weird when it came to number counting, going from 7 to 2 like that. <laughs> but no, <laughs> Mortal Kombat has everyone beat. And here we have an excellent uh, demonstration of the inverse ninja theory, that the more ninjas that there are, the less effective they are in combat. Yep. <laughs> that seems to be the running theme in this game. Although there are some really killer action scenes in the story mode, I'll say. A lot of the time, it's like watching a movie, a Mortal Kombat movie, if Mortal Kombat movies were good. But well, the first one's, <laughs> the first one's fun. The first one is good. We can, we can at least acknowledge that, can't we? In, 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 in a fun 90s movie way, it's yes. A, it, it's a good kind of bad. It, like, it's an enjoyable kind of bad. Uh, but, you know, yeah, that's not quite the same I, kind of good I'm talking about. I like... Okay, well, well, well hang on. I, I mean, I saw the, the movie when it first came out, because I'm dating myself now and I am that old. But, I, you know, I've always actually liked it. I always thought it was a decent movie. Like, you can compare that to, like, say, the Street Fighter movie. Yeah, yeah. Which is a great kind of fucking awful. Oh, yeah. It, but it's just, you know, I, I, uh, the Mortal Kombat movie had the advantage of being an actually decent adaptation of the game concept at that time. So, while it was hokey, it was it, it was something fans could enjoy, you know? It wasn't the freaking yeah. Mario movie, you know? You know what I mean. <laughs> yeah, which nobody enjoyed. I think that, uh, and also, like, fun fact for people who don't know in the audience that, that um, I mean, well, probably everyone does know, but the, the same director who did Mortal Kombat also went on to do Resident Evil as well. That's not surprising in the slightest. And here is <laughs> Jackie Briggs bringing the pain. Like this character. Speaking of the movies, though, apparently, I guess they got the actor for Ryan from that movie to appear in the French commercial for this game. Christopher Lambert, yeah. Yeah, that's weird <laughs> it's weird but also it's it's also really weird in the sense that like he is clearly when when you see him in the movie which to be fair was like 25 years ago something like that and when you see him in the french commercial he has had like a horrible amount of botox in that time like his face has been stung by a swarm of afri angry african-american bees yeah he looks very weird now he does look very weird now. It's a little off-putting. Like, it's cool that he's in the commercial, but, um, yeah, I mean, yeah, Chris, we love you. Just just age gracefully, please. <laughs> so, one of the interesting things about the time travel element in this game is that we also have, like, Liu Kang, Liu Kang and Katana, who both became, like, evil undead revenants in, in 11, and are now... Uh, not 11, in 10. And they're... Their past selves wind up fighting their future selves, like completely, completely rejecting the idea that they would ever become this evil. And it's especially you're not me. It's especially interesting <laughs> in Liu Kang's case because Liu Kang is just like the goodest of the goodies, you know. Like he's a, he's he's a freaking saint. So the idea that he <laughs> who would are you this is, is 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 repugnant to him. Like he 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 won't he won't he won't let it happen. Now that he knows about it. Yeah. Like, who are you? I am you, but stronger. It's like, okay, the idea that Mortal Kombat had weird time travel elements in it has, has been a thing for a while. Like, I'm pretty sure Mortal Kombat 9 started because, like, Raiden, ra Raiden transmitted visions of the future to his past self from a bad ending. and <laughs> From the bad games, yes. Yeah, that, that was basically his... That was basically NetherRealms rebooting the franchise. So, but not hard rebooting it for no reason. <laughs> yes. Yeah. I mean, you know, it's an interesting well, actually, way to reboot things. Well, that's a good question. Uh, being the the hardcore DC fanboy that you are, uh, Ryan, uh, did you ever do Mortal Kombat versus DC? I fiddled with it. I never owned it. It's a very meh game. Yeah. Yeah, it is. <laughs> it, it, it's it's one of the it's one of the most boring. It exists fighting games in existence. Yeah, they hadn't. They hadn't gotten to the point where they upgraded Mortal Kombat's gameplay quite yet, so they were they were still trying to figure out what to do with the gameplay. And as for the story, 
well, it, it's a dumb crossover with without much heart. They they made a really good decision when they just decided to make DC its own fighting game series and Mortal Kombat its own fighting game series. But DC, Marvel, Mar, uh, not Mar, Marvel, uh, Mortal Kombat versus DC was basically a game that existed because they had both licenses and wanted to use both. So, and. I think what's funny about it, though, is that as, as reviled as it is, and as you said, it's like very without heart and like all the fatalities don't have any blood and things like that. I think at the time it was actually the best selling Mortal Kombat game, to, uh, pretty much, at least of the, like, the recent games. I don't know about it versus the original, but um, it did sell very well from what I, was, from what I heard at the time. Yeah, well, your cro- crossover tend to do that, and I read that it was the, from a developer standpoint, it was kind of the inspiration to, you know, kind of fix a lot of the things because people while they bought it, did have issues with it. Yeah. So they're like, okay, we, we have some decent ideas here. Let's actually, you know, work on it instead of just pumping out crappy game solo games that they had been doing at the time. Yeah. Hey, you know, they did a really yeah. good job in, in improving the fighting mechanics. It's really good in the new Mortal Kombat games, and it's really good in Injustice as well. So... Yeah, I, I actually really honestly appreciate prob- like the um, I mean I, I guess that like like it's really obvious over the last few games from Injustice yeah from Mortal Kombat nine to ten to Justice one and Justice two things like that the progression that Netherrealm made as a studio because like you look at this game this game looks not only does it look fantastic like this is the best looking fighting game in the market hands down right now but also. Considering that, like, you look at how their animations were so horrible not that long ago, their animations were horrible, and their facial models were just the worst. Never forget now they have some of the best models. Yeah, and, exactly. And, yeah, now, and, now they have some of the best facial animations, the best character models. Yeah, yeah it's um, we're looking at uh, you know, in the cutscenes, especially, we're looking at animation that's that's pretty much on par with like a, a an Uncharted game. For example, it's got that the, the, maybe a little below, but it's got really detailed faces and really realistically animated faces. Uh, oh God! Yeah, we have to, exactly. We have to endure Ronda Rousey trying to to voice act a touching death scene. <laughs> this is oh, this is not going to go well. <laughs> <laughs> it's like Harold Zoid in Futurama. It's like I said, emote. God damn it! <laughs> She's lucky her head didn't get crushed, so that she. Well, that's never this. stopped anyone yeah. in Mortal Kombat. Well, I mean, so that you yeah, can have got, this 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 heart rending death conversation, game. you know, uh, 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 those with great power comes great responsibility or some or some shit. Uh, uh, go out and save the world, Spider Woman. Uh, yeah, I'm dead. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I, I will say it is like it, like Mortal Kombat does have the balls to just constantly kill off their own characters is pretty impressive. Oh, yeah, well, I mean they keep coming back, but still they have, they have like the ultimate comic book get out of jail clause uh, time travel. We can bring back characters as much as we want, but it also does mean that the story modes can still have death scenes, which makes up for the fact that you're not using fatalities in story mode. Like yeah. Kano getting killed later on in the story mode is one of my favorite moments in this game, <laughs> just because it's it, it, it's it's creepy, but also satisfying because Kano is an asshole. <laughs> he can almost un- overlook the horrible acting from Ronda Rousey that happened just moments beforehand. I also really really like Cassie Cage rocking the dual pistols, which would honestly be more satisfying if she used them in combat, but you know. Yeah, she's less pistol focused in this game than she was in Mortal Kombat uh, Ten. Yeah, I, I like playing. I my, mean, well, my, my it, 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 it depends on how you look. Sorry, sorry, people. Are gonna, I can already keep people, people com- typing in the comments about this. She does use her guns more in her combos, but in terms of actually using her guns as like a zoning tool, she uses them less. Yeah. So let me qualify that. Yeah, like like she has a move where she shoots you in the foot, or that kind of thing, or a throw where she shoots you in the back of your head. But she's not as big, big with her with her guns and in, in um in the rest of her move set, which you know is good. Yeah, m- exactly. m- Most characters who have projectiles in, in this game have slower moving projectiles, not like Hadouken slow, but slow enough that you can react. You know. Yeah. Where do you sit on like this this game and basically all Nether Realm games? Like fighting games to me because they are such a passion of mine. That's why I have my own fighting game channel. They like. 
they're very hard to get into for beginners. They're very, in terms of like online games, they have a very high bar to entry. And one of those bars to entry is spamming projectiles because people need to learn how to deal with spamming projectiles. And when you have a traditional fighting game, like a Capcom game, when two people do a projectile, they just clash and that's it. Whereas in Netherrealm games, they always pass each other and hit regardless. So if you pick a character who has very good projectiles, initially that's very hard to get past if you're just beginning. Um, so where do you sit on the whole like projectiles clashing versus projectiles passing each other by sort of uh, set camp, basically? Well, for me, um, because I'm more into 3D fighters, I, I tend to favor games that don't do projectiles as much. Um, and 3D fighters, well, generally won't because you have the sidestep thing on top of everything else, you can just go around the projectiles a lot of the time. So, mm -hmm. yeah. Uh, I tend to prefer characters that get up in your face more so than projectiles. But that's just my preference. Uh, I will say I do agree with you, though. Projectile spamming, or any character that is spammable, makes it hard to, hard to get into a game. Because, okay, you get... You get your like really experienced players online who really do a good job of playing the game without doing that kind of crap. But in order to get to them, you have to go through like the mid-scrub tier where everyone is spamming projectiles because they know everyone below them in rank is is going to have is going to have a bad time with it. <laughs> yeah. And yeah, and exactly. I, I was playing this online a few days ago, and I'm I'm playing Frost at the moment, and Frost has some decent projectiles in this game. And um, so, yeah, I'm spamming those projectiles because it works when you're just starting out and people don't know how to deal with it. And so I get, like, the angry message from a guy, like, being, oh, dude, you suck at this game, you only know how to spam. And I'm saying to him, like, dude, if I don't do it to you, someone else will until you learn how to figure it out and deal with it. Yeah. Well, you know, when, when you're playing online, you have to do the things that work. When you're when you're playing up against when you're playing against the computer, fine. You know, limit yourself that way. Get better at the game. But when you're playing online, you're either going to be fighting someone who's better than you or fighting someone who's worse. And that someone who's worse is probably going to be spamming like nobody else. So, yeah. Whatever whatever wins you the fight and keeps your win ratio from dropping, I guess. <laughs> Gotta get them dubs. Okay, can we can we also make the fan theory that Kronika is actually Femship's uh, true ending after Mass Effect Three? Uh, wait, wait, I mean, if it's in it for hell, I guess. <laughs> that you know, I get it. I I, I get it. Uh. <laughs> I want that to be my head cannon now. <laughs> she doesn't just become a god of the machine; she becomes a god of time. This character is new, exactly, right? Yeah. Yeah, he is the collector. Yes, uh, I originally thought he was one of um, Goro's race, but he has more arms, so I don't know what he is. I mean, they finally did it. They finally worked the C equals K into someone's character name. That's, I mean, I mean, I mean Kotokan, I suppose, has that going, but he also has a name that could just have been spelled with a K normally. So, yeah, <laughs> yeah, why not? I do like the character roster in this game. It's got got some interesting things going on. Also, like three goddamn demigods. I, I love how Curl just walks down the stairs and he's like, "Bitch, have you seen my pecs? <laughs> have you seen my awesome headdress?" <laughs> it's interesting to see Kotal Khan's story I, continue because that was in it. That was a, that was a. I like that part of Mortal Kombat 10 where you, you know you had to support Kotal Khan trying to claim the throne of Outworld after Shao Kahn died. That blade is oddly clean for an Outworld one. Although, the Outworld general public is fickle as hell, because here they are, cheering for all their worth for Kotal Kahn, and then later on Shao Kahn is trying to take over, and they're cheering for all their worth for him. It's like, okay, what are you, sheep? Do you have any political Go opinions your own team. <laughs> Go sports team! Go sports team. I also find it funny, like, the next time you see like, a close-up of the uh, Outworld crowd, someone pointed out that they low-key look like Shrek characters. <laughs> so Lord Farquaad's in there. Yeah, they're weird faces that just don't suit the game at all. Yeah. yeah. They're NPCs. They weren't given much effort, I imagine. Background NPCs in video games tend to look a bit off when it comes to facial uh, features and animation. They don't have the same amount of detail put into their faces, but they also don't have the same amount of uh, facial mocap mo going on, so it makes them really uncanny valley. 
Okay, also, this, this video is already going to be flagged by YouTube for being uh, low monetization because of all the blood, so can I just throw in Darude Sandstorm here just to really go the whole hog on this? Um... <laughs> I'd rather not, <laughs> just in case. I, I like how you took that seriously. <laughs> you see, that right there, comparing Johnny's face to Johnny's face there, was exactly what I was talking about. You can see that Johnny's face is more lined than his younger counterpart. It's the same face, but yeah, it, it's it's got yeah, so they do. It's got more more wear and tear to it, and Sonia just doesn't have that. I, okay, sure. Yeah, exactly. That's that's what I was making. Is that like if you looked at the two of them together, if you had the chance to, they look exactly the freaking same. It's weird. I would have liked it if they. I would actually liked it if they did more lines on her face. Honestly, I really would have. <laughs>